<laughs> sinusoidal equations. This time we're going from the equation to either the graph or the characteristic, right? Either one. So given the equation, we should be able to write down the characteristics of the uh, characteristics of the sinusoidal or uh, draw the graph if we need to. All right, so the, uh, the equation is Okay, which is on your formula sheet. And then the other thing you get on your formula sheet is uh, this. So you get two things on your formula sheet for sinusoidal, right? You get y equals a sine bx plus b plus b. And uh, okay, that's not what you get. You get this on your formula sheet. Let's move that over. So this is what you get. Period is equal to 2 pi over b. And this is not on the formula sheet, but it's a pretty small rearrangement, right? Just a quick rearrangement. <coughs> so if you had to solve for B and you knew the period, that's what we were doing yesterday, right? We knew the period, or we could get the period from the graph, and then we could get the value of B. All right, so let's do a sinusoidal equation. Y equals, okay, pick a number, any number. Three. Y equals 3. Sine. Pick a number. 7. X. Let's go minus. Just, you know, plus or minus. So for the next two numbers, it could be positive, it could be negative. Pick a number. 2. Yeah. Plus or minus. Minus. Minus 2. And? 5. Plus or minus. Plus 5. Minus, plus 5 or minus 5. Plus. Plus. Okay, whatever. Okay. It will make a difference, right? So, all right, obviously I know nothing about this. Like, it's not like I've written this down on a piece of paper beforehand unless I'm psychic like and knew the numbers you were going to choose. Um, but I should be able to tell the characteristics of the graph, right? So, sine graph, where do we always want to start? In the middle. So where's the middle? Five. Okay, so what we could do is actually look at this, we could write down. Okay, so what's A? Three. What's B? What's C? Negative two. What's D? Five. Okay, starting there. So you said the midline is five. So the equation of the midline is what? Y equals 5. So equation of midline. Okay, so if I was going to draw this, if I wanted to draw the graph, which we'll do in, you know, in a little bit, right? So we'll get all the characteristics, then we'll say, all right, let's draw the graph. <coughs> right? Or see if we can figure out how to draw the graph. And then we can kind of verify that by drawing the graph with our calculator, right? Put that in our calculated graph and say, okay, how does that look compared to what we've got? All right, midline, what's the next thing we do? After midline, we look at the... You got A, B, or C, which one? We look at A, right? Amplitude. So what's that tell us then? If the middle's at 5, what is the amplitude being 3? What does that mean? So how high does it go? What's the highest? What's the max? 8. How do you know that? Okay, so if you want to get the maximum, where do you start? At the midline, and then the amplitude tells you how far it is from the midline to the max. So the maximum is equal to D plus A, right? If I start at the midline, the definition of amplitude is the distance from the midline to the maximum, right? So we'll go 5 plus 3. So we've got the max is 8. What's the minimum? 2. How do we get 2? 
What did you do to get two? Five minus three, five minus three right? So we're going to go the midline minus the amplitude, five minus three, which is two. Okay? So given the equation, you got the midline. You know the amplitude, you go up that much. Okay, the amplitude will always be positive. You're never going to see like a negative three sign, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So the amplitude will always be positive. It tells you how far you go from the midline to get up to the maximum. So go D plus A. And how far from the midline D do you go down minus A to get to the minimum? Okay, so we've got the middle, we've got the max, we got the min, right? So if we want to sketch those characteristics, let's just, I'm just going to delete some space, okay? And I'm going to just go over here and just say, all right, let's draw this. Actually, let's, let's put that a little further down. So let's draw this and say there's 5, there's 2, there's 8, right? So I know my midline is here, so we'll just sketch in, here's your midline. And then I'm going as high as here and as low as here. So we got two other characteristics to figure out, right? So what's the next one? I know B. B is 7. Okay, C is negative 2. What are you going to do with B? And what would 2 pi divided by 7 give us? Um, 3.5 pi. Nope. In more general terms. Um, period. Um, okay, so. <laughs> If you're given the graph, the first thing you do is you figure out max and min, you average them to get the D value, right? We always go with the midline first. You then take the difference between them, divide by 2 to get the amplitude. Okay, if you're given the equation, you start with here's my midline, so this is how I get to the max, this is how I get to the min. Then you go with the formula, right? On your formula sheet, period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 2 pi divided by 7. <laughs> and so I'm actually going to work that out. I want a number, right? Because we want to be able to uh, graph that. Is there no? Oh, wait, it's off by about that much. Great. There we go. OK, can I do it here? So 2, that's 5. OK, it's going to be fun. Let's. So I want to go here. That'll delete. Okay, wait. Clear. Clear. Okay, two. Second function. Pi. Divided by seven. Okay, that was fun. Okay, so uh, point nine zero. Or let's go point eight nine eight. So the period is going to be a little bit less than one unit, right? 0.898 units. Now, what does C give us? Well, we know that the start point is negative C over B comma D. Okay. Well, we've got B and C, right? So the start point is negative. Okay, so what was C? C is negative 2. So it's negative, negative 2 over 7, comma, and D was 5. So that's positive 2 sevenths and 5. And if we want positive 2 sevenths, then that's uh, 0 0.285, 0 Okay, I did it on the calculator, but all the keys are off by one. I'm going to have to kill that calculator and restart it because that's 
We can't have that. So let's put a scale down here. We got zero. Let's go uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.751, 1.25. Okay, because we calculated the period to be a little bit less than one. We calculated the start point to be about 0 0.268, so I'm just going to go like slightly to the right of there. So the period, remember, was 0 0.898. Now, how many play how many parts do we divide the period into? Four parts, right? So how big is each part? We're going to take 0.898 divided by 4, right? Which is a 2 and then a 2 and then a 4. So about about 0.2 and a little bit. Okay, 0.224 so we've got uh, 0 0.25, we want 0.224 is going to take us to about 0.47, almost at about 0.5. We're going to reach the maximum, right? So remember, start point is midline going up. And the first quarter of the period, right, period is 0.898, the first quarter is going to be from the midline up. The next quarter, so we're at about 0.5, we're going to go to about 0.7-ish, just a little shy of 0.7, we'll be back to the midline. And then another 0.22, so 0.7 and 0.22 is going to be like 0.9, we'll be just uh, probably a bit shy of 1, we'll be reaching here, and then one period later, or another 0.22, so it'll be like the 0.25 plus 0.9. About one point, a little bit over. It's around here. We'll be back, right? Okay, so we know the period, we're going to divide it by four because that's when we're going to do each thing, right? We got the start point, negative C over B. Negative C over B was two sevenths, about point, about point two five, close enough, right? And five, okay, and then it goes up. So then I should be drawing like so. And then this is going to work backwards, so it's going to hit the minimum right about there, okay? Right around, uh, at around time zero, we'll be hitting kind of the minimum. <coughs> so that's the information we got, right? Now what we're going to do is, let's duplicate this on the calculator. So first, let's start off by setting the window. So I say, okay, we're going to go from uh, zero. I can start at zero. And let's go to 1.25, 5.25, right? Which means the, the ticks will be close, but. Um, and Y min, zero. And let's go to 10. Um, and I'm going to graph three things. I'm going to graph five, because that's the midline. I'm going to graph eight, because that's the max. I'm going to graph two, because that's the min. Right, so I'll draw those three lines, right? I'll draw the midline, I'll draw the maximum, I'll draw the minimum. Okay, and then we'll plot our meridian y equals. Okay, so what was the equation? It was like 3 sine was b, 7x minus 2 plus 5. All right, so drum line. This doesn't work, and it's like sort of back up and figure it all out. What went wrong? <laughs> Midline, max, min. So I expect to see it starting pretty close to the minimum. <coughs> All right, close enough? Yeah. If I want to check this value, I expect this to be two sevens, right? 0.286, so second. Calc, and we can do the intersect. Now, intersects would be interesting here because I've got a number of things, but I want to intersect y1 with y4, actually, right? So I'm going to hit enter. Now, it says second curve. I'm not looking for that intersection, and I'm not looking for this one, right? Because I've got four curves. So I do want y1 with y4, and I'm just going to leave it there. So 0.286 and 5, right? So the start point is right where we said it would be, 0.286 comma 5. 
And all of that, all this information, right, all of that came from this equation, right? So we give you the equation, you can do two things, right? I mean, graphing, it's kind of simple because you've got a calculator to graph it, so that's not a big deal, right? But the big deal is, all right, start off by saying, okay, the D value is the midline. Midline is 5. The maximum, it's the midline plus the amplitude. The minimum is the midline minus the amplitude. The period is 2 pi divided by the B value. And the thing you're not going to have to do, so in class we'll do, right? The start point is negative C over B. I mean, if we don't do that, then, you know, we have everything, you know, I'd have my max, my min, I just wouldn't know where that was. So I really wouldn't know to draw this. I wouldn't know. Hey, I got to start here and then go to here, 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 and here. Uh, the start point has an x value and a y value. The x value of the start point is negative c over b. The y value is b because it starts at the midline going up. So the second coordinate of the start point has to be the midline. So here's the deal. There was a diploma question once, basically gave you this and said, what's the highest value? What's the maximum? Eight. One quarter of the problems got that question right. I mean, seriously, to me it was like about the easiest question on the whole exam, right? Because all, all, no, all you have to know is, well, there's the middle and you go up this high. That's it. Now, I don't know if they were looking for it. It's got to be a trick. It's got to be a trick here. There's, there's no trick there, right? So some questions are pretty easy. There, <coughs> there are some that are quite hard. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take some equations that model a real-life situation and talk about, so what does this mean then, right? So in terms of... I've got a sinusoidal equation. It's modeling something. So when I talk about maximum, I'm talking about a maximum something, right? It could be a maximum tidal height, right? Maximum depth of the water. It could be the minimum depth of the water. It could be the average depth of the water. So in this case, it's going to be number of hours of daylight. So the number of hours of daylight. In Montreal, in case any of you go to McGill or something, it's given by So there's the sinusoidal equation. <coughs> Oops, this should be a T. Not an X. Can't mix X's and T. So if they give you that, then they have to tell you, okay, well, what's T, right? So T is the number of days, okay? So where T is the number of days. Starting where one is January 1st, so, or is the number of the day, let's say of the day. Where January 1st is one, and December 31st is 365. So it's what day are we at in the year? Right? So what day of the year? So, you know, January 31st, 31st day of the year. And D of T is the number of hours of daylight. Is the number of hours of daylight on day T. So if we stick a 1 in there, we're going to get the number of hours of daylight on January 1st. 
or 365, we'll get the number of hours of daylight on December 31st, which should be really close to each other, right? Because I mean, it's one day after another. I mean, any two days, the number of hours of daylight don't differ significantly, right? It could be a few minutes. Uh, but obviously, the number of hours of daylight from uh, December 31st to July 1st are significantly different, right? I mean, we know that. Okay, so we don't need to draw the graph to answer questions about this, right? And what are the kind of questions that we can answer? Well, so the first thing we should do, though, is if we're going to do sinusoidal equations, let's identify A, B, C, and D. So what's A? 3.6. What's B? 0.017. What's C? Okay, it's negative 1.36. Okay, if you don't get that right, you're going to throw your shift off. And what's D? 12. So it's written a little bit differently than we've seen before because it leads off with the D value, right? So it's 12 plus, and then we get into, oh, well, here's the rest of the equation, right? There's the A sine BX plus C. So what we want to do, uh, I can ask you various questions. We're just going to discuss all of the numbers and what they mean. So, what's the 12? The midline. What's that mean in this case then? So, what's the midline? <coughs> so, it's the midline or the median. Where's the midline or the median? It's in the middle. So it's the middle number of hours of daylight. It's the average number of hours of daylight during the year is 12. The median number, right? The middle number. So the median. So in this case, we're going to go with median, right? So um, the median, okay, D, is 12. So another word for median is average, right? So we'd say the average number, right? Average could be the mean. So to do the mean, I just add up all the numbers by, by how many. It could be the median, which is the middle. And it could be the mode, which is the most frequently occurring. But in this case, so we say median is the average. So the average number of hours, the average hours of daylight, in Montreal is 12. So what can we say? We could say half the year there are, well, 12 is in the middle. So half the year there are less than 12 hours of daylight, and half the year there is more than 12 hours of daylight. Right? 12 is the median. It's the middle number. Okay. So half the year. I mean, the 12 hours of daylight is really only going to occur a few times during the year, right? When we have equal day and equal night. What do we call that when we have equal hours of day and night? It happens in March and September. Daylight savings. Uh, not quite. Equinox. The equinox, right? So it's the equinox, right? During the spring and or the vernal and the autumnal equinox, we have 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of day, right? So that's kind of what happened. And other than that, so once we've hit spring, which we have, which means we now have more than 12 hours of daylight. And that's going to continue until when? Until September, right? When we get back to equal day, equal night, and then the days get shorter and the nights get longer, and we have fewer than 12 hours of daylight each day. Okay, so half the year, there are more than 12 hours of daily. And half the year, there is less than 12 hours.
So that's what the median means, right? If this had been a tide, then the median is just the average depth of water in the harbor. And half the time there would be more water than that, and half the time there would be less water, right? Less depth of water. All right, how much more daylight is there? What's the most daylight you get in Montreal? 15.6 hours. How do you get that? Yeah, you think that, I think 80% of the people should know this and 25% of the people know this. It just amazes me. So the maximum is D plus A, right? You take the middle. Okay, so on average is 12 hours, but we vary by the amplitude, which is 3.6. So the maximum is D plus A, which is 12 plus 3.6, which is 15.6 hours. So the maximum uh, daylight in Montreal. Shortest day of the year, when's that? Uh, I said, when is it? December 31st. No. No. It's like December 20th, 21st, right? The first day of winter is the shortest day. What are those called? The solstice. The solstice, right? So the summer solstice, winter solstice. That's when you got the shortest day and longest day. So this is the longest day, right? That 15.6 hours is going to occur on June 2021, something like that, right? And the shortest day, so how many, what's the uh, minimum? Eight. So the minimum is D minus A, which is 12 minus 3.6, which is 8.4 hours. Okay, that should occur. December 20th, 21st, that would be about day number what? One. 365 days in a year. About 355, right? It's going to be about 10 days before the end of the year, 21st, right? 10 days from the 31st. 31st, day 365, back up 10. So around day 355. Okay, so the minimum is 8.4 hours. So if we're in Calgary, is our amplitude going to be greater than Montreal or less? We are more north than that. Well, do we get more than, uh, is our longest day longer than 15 hours of daylight? 15.6. Think about it, June 20th, sun comes up probably around 5 in the morning and sets around 10 at night. That's uh, like 12, you know, 17 hours, yeah. So we're, we're, a, a bit, we're a bit longer than them. And then Edmonton would be a bit longer than us, right? And then Fort McMurray would be a bit longer and Cold Lake, you know, the further north you go till you get up to the Arctic Circle where it just doesn't set, right? So our, our amplitude, now our 12 is still going to be about the same, right? We're still going to have the solstice or the equinoxes, right? 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night. But... <coughs> our amplitude is going to be greater. What if we head down to Ecuador? What's their amplitude going to be like? It could be zero, right? Like they, they're at the equator. What's the equator? It's equal, right? So you're about equal day, equal night all year. They're going to have a small, there would be a small variation. They're just tilted at 23 degree angle with the sun and blah, blah, blah. Okay, but. So the further south you go till you hit the equator, the smaller the amplitude is going to get. And then if you start heading further south again, you're going to get a larger amplitude as you head away, right? Okay, so uh, we got the midline. We use the amplitude to get max and min. What else can we say about this? What are you going to do with the B value? Yeah. Two tied divided by 0 0.017. So the period is equal to 2 pi divided by 0 0.017, which is equal to what? 
How much? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to. I don't know. Okay, somebody want to do it? Give me a number. Three sixty-nine point six. Rounded. Where's my calculator? Uh, so two pi divided by three. Oops, divided by point one point zero. 369.6. Okay, so what's 369 about? It's pretty close to 365, right? So the 0.017 is a slightly rounded value because the period should be how much? Should be 365, right? Okay, so we're using a rounded value, that's why we're getting something, you know, because it's still rounded in three decimal places. So, okay, let's say about one year. One year's? About one year. Okay, and where is the start point? So the start point, so think about what does the start point mean in this case? So the start point is negative C, what was C? Uh, negative, so it's negative, negative 1.36 divided by 0 0.017 comma 12. All right, what's, this would just be positive. What's 1.36 divided by 0 0.017? All right, I can do it. I don't need, oh, 80? 80. What the heck's that mean? 80. 80th day. What's the 80th day of the year around? Pretty close. How many days January? February. 31. February? 28. That's 59. How do we get to 80? We're going to go 21 days. So where are we? March 21st. What's March 21st? The first day of spring. It's the equinox. It's when we first hit 12 hours of daylight. Right? So the start point is when you first hit the midline, which is 12, the 12 hours of daylight, and it's going up, right? After March, we get longer daylight. So if we were to go graph this thing, I mean, now that we know everything there is to kind of know about it, let's go set our window. So we're going to go from 0 to, say, 366 by, I don't know, say, 30s. Our Y min, so we said the minimum was 8.4 hours and the maximum was 15.6. I'm going to go, say, 0 to 20, okay, by twos. Y equals, I like to graph the midline, so let's graph the midline, which is 12. We said the max was 15.6, so I'll graph that, and the min was 8.4. Let's see that. Let's clear that out. So this is 12 plus 3.6 sine 0.017x minus 1.36. Okay, so first it's going to draw the midline. Then it'll draw the max and the min. It's going to start drawing the curve on about day 80. Right, so you'll see that about two and a half ticks in, two and two thirds ticks in. It's gonna hit the midline, it'll be going up, right? Cause that's gonna be March. So there's your midline, that's the average, right? Half the time we're gonna be above, half the time below. We're gonna end up going as high as this, as low as this, and 36, we're gonna hit the midline on day 80, which is March. We're gonna stay above 12 hours of daylight until September, right? And then on day 355, we're gonna hit the minimum. Right, and then it's going to climb up. So if I do a minimum right around here, it should be around day 355. Uh, minimum 3. And I want this for y4. I'm going to have to go a little while to get there. Okay, so I'll hit enter there, and then we'll just... We'll move a little further along so that we start to actually climb up again. Okay, so that's up, obviously, right? And then the minimum is going to be somewhere down here. 
Okay. So 357. Okay. Well, pretty close to 355, right? Okay. So what do we have? We have a sinusoidal function which is mon modeling hours of daylight, right? And if we look at the graph and reset the window so that the x goes from 0 to whatever angle, 0 to 410, I don't care about that. Uh, if we reset the window, then that matches up with what we know by having been on this earth for however long, right? That there's not that much daylight, and then we hit the equinox, and then there's more daylight from March until September, and then the days get shorter, and then they get longer, and then they get shorter, and then they get longer, and then they get shorter. And so on. Yeah, but after you're gone, the days still get longer and shorter. Okay, one last thing. The London Eye Ferris Wheel. So we've done a Ferris Wheel before, right? We know the characteristics of a Ferris Wheel. I'm going to give you the equation to model the London Eye Ferris Wheel. And using that, we can discuss the characteristics of the wheel. Okay, so the... Uh, Yes. 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 Okay. I don't have any say in that, right? It's like, no, oh, you can't go, but I have to. Thank you. So if I turn around to look, it's like, I could have sworn she was here. Whoever it is is not going to be there when I... Okay, so we've done Ferris wheels. What can you tell me about the London Eye Ferris wheel? It's a circle. It's a circle. That's good. We're going to lump you in with that 75% of the province. Can you get that one wrong? <laughs> so, um, how high is the hub? How high is the hub of the Ferris wheel? How high is the hub? 69.5. What's the radius? If you know one thing, which is amplitude is radius, and you happen to get a question that actually asks that, you will be victorious. Then you better get it right. The axle. Yeah. So radius is A. Yep. And what's B? No. Midline. And what's at the midline of a Ferris wheel? The hub. Or the axle. Or the little pin upon which the whole thing spins around. Or the center. But we call it the hub or the axle, right? Okay. Got to be technical here. So D is equal to 6. Okay, let's do the ABC. What's A? What's B? What's C? And what's D? Okay, so what's D? Not the number. It's the midline. And on a Ferris wheel, it's the middle of the wheel. On a car tire, it's the axle. On a bicycle tire, it's the axle, right? It's the center of the wheel. So you're going to mount the wheel to the... It's what it turns around. Okay? So the median... 
which is also the midline, is the hub of the wheel. If you're riding on the wheel, how high? What's the highest you will go? 137. Okay, 137. How do you get that? Do it the other way around. So we go D plus A, right? We say from the middle, I must go up by the amplitude. And the amplitude is what physical measurement on the wheel? The radius. Good. I mean, I never emphasized this as much until after yeah. February when I was item writing it. Said, Seriously? Like, you know. Anyway, so it's the hub of the wheel. So A is the radius of the wheel. In Montreal with daylight, what's A? Three point six. The number of hours that you're going to vary, right? We'll go from we'll go three point six hours above the average, three point six hours below the average. In Calgary, that number would be larger, right? Because we have a longer longest day and a shorter shortest day, right? So <coughs> in the winter, our days are shorter than Montreal, <coughs> but in the summer, <coughs> excuse me, our days are longer. Okay, so A is the radius of the wheel. From that, we can get the maximum, which is D plus A, which is 69.5 plus 67.5, which say it was, 135 or something, 137. Okay, and it's actually in meters, right? So that, there should be meters on there, right? We should have put hours on the stuff in Montreal, hours and days. Minimum is D minus A, which is 69.5 minus 67.5. So what's that mean? What's this two meter thing? <coughs> so the height of two meters, what's that mean in terms of the first bill? Yeah, it's a loading thing. I've been there. I think it's more than two meters, but uh, hard to say. Strikes me it was more than two meters. I was thinking about it and saying two meters, and I think it's more than two meters. But they also might have dug down a bit below ground to allow for clearance and stuff. But whatever. So they'll say two meters, right? So that's the height at which you're boarding. Okay? Uh, what else do we have? What else do we have? What else can we figure out? So they're asking you stuff about they give you this equation for the London Square, so we don't say, how long does it take to go around? Period. period. How do we get the period? 2 pi divided by B. Okay, so the period is 2 pi divided by B. What is it? Um, the, the time here is in minutes, right? T. Time in minutes and height in meters. 30 minutes. Okay, so the period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 2 pi divided by whatever b was, 0 0.209, which is 30 minutes. Actually, it's 0 0.06, so it's 0 0.06 times 60 would be 3.6 seconds, so not 6 seconds, but 3.6 seconds. We won't ask that. They would say the time to the nearest minute. Okay, so we get the period. Now the other thing we could get is the start point, which really doesn't matter for this. So the start point is when you're riding the wheel, when does it first reach the average height, right? When do you first hit? You know, when are you even with the hub? Right? And it's like, who cares? You know, like seriously. Um, and also it would actually be a quarter of the period, right? So if you went 2 pi divided by 1.571, you're going to get like uh, 7 and a half. No. Okay. So in this particular case, right, and the C value, they're not going to test you on that, right? And so in this case, I mean, C, it's nice to know. Hey, that's 80. Oh, in 80 days is March 20th. But hey, wait a second. That March 20th really is. That's the first day of spring. 
Right? Okay, that's kind of neat. Right? We actually have this function which is modeling hours of daylight and it actually fits up with what we know to be true. And we could graph this and look at it, right? And we would have to set our window from uh, 0 to like 140 or something. I draw a line at 69.5. So let me ask you this then, because there's another question I could ask. Um, how long does it take to first reach a height of 75 meters? So what are you going to have to do if I say, how long does it take to first reach a height of 75 meters? So you got to graph this, right? So you got to go into here, turn the thing on, go to y equals, you could put in, uh, I'm going to throw in the midline just because I like to see the midline. I'm not going to do the max or the min here, so I'll just clear everything out and go back up here. So let's enter the equation, 67.5 sine 0.209x minus, wrong minus, 1.571 1 plus 69.5. <coughs> so we know the period is uh, 30 minutes, so we're going to set from 0 to 30, right? That way we see one complete cycle, right? So you, you need to, if you're going to graph this thing, you want to figure out the period because otherwise you can set this thing from like 0 to 1 and you just say, I don't see anything. You can set it from 0 to 1,000 and it's like all I see is lying doing this. right? So we want to know, all right, I want to first hit that. Okay, scale, sure, 1 is fine. Uh, minimum, 0, we need to know how high. So if you, again, if you're going to graph it, you need to know. The middle is at about 70. It's going to go as high as 140 and as low as 0. So then I need to know this to put in the min and the max. Okay, and let's go by tens. Okay, now I can graph it. There's my midline. Here's the uh, graph. Okay, so I got a good graph. I want to know when it first hits 75. So we got to go back here and put in y3 is 75. Okay, and at this point you might want to just take this one out. So I only want to see one line here the curve and then the, the line at 75. It's going to hit 75 twice, right? Once on the way up and once on the way down. But we want the time it first reaches 75. Second calc intersect. It's going to go down in a straight line. It's faster to go across the straight line. So the time we first hit is at 7.9 minutes. So 7.9 minutes into the ride, we are going to reach a height of 75 meters. 15 minutes in, we're going to hit the max at 135, right? And so on. Okay, so that's what you got to do. If they say, uh, what height do you reach after 10 minutes or something, then you just go in here, just go second calc, set a value, because you're given an x value, a time, and say at 10 minutes, you'll be at a height of uh, 102.98, or probably they'll say to the nearest meter, 103 meters. All right, so tomorrow we will finish off sinusoidal by doing sinusoidal regressions, right? So that given a set of data that we've measured or has been measured for us, we're going to come up with our own model, right? like this, we're basically just going to come up with one of these equations. At which point we can then do the exact analysis we've done now. So the average of this is this, the most, the least, the period is this, etc, etc. Well, let's go Tuesday. I'll give you Monday to get all. Thanks.